Hi, and thanks for watching the End Time Revival broadcast with Pastor Harold Smith. I'm your announcer, Jason Connors. The broadcast is recorded every Sunday morning at the Mark's First United Pentecostal Church, located on Academy Drive in Mark's, Mississippi. You can join the church for services every Sunday and Wednesday, or you can view past services at www.freegospelradio.com. This broadcast is made possible by the generosity of its viewers. You can help keep the broadcast going by sending your donation to Pastor Harold Smith, P.O. Box 373, Marks, Mississippi, 38646. Help us spread the word by mailing in your donation. And now, the End Time Revival broadcast with Pastor Harold Smith.
Hallelujah. I feel him here this morning. This world is not our permanent dwelling. We have a bed.
neighbor and say, we in revival. Thank God. It's such an honor this morning to have Daniel with it, Brother Daniel Smith with us. And uh, always does a great job. And uh, so we want him to come this morning and sing and preach. And we're going to be blessed of God. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, that's right. Let's give the Lord a good hand of praise. Can we do that? Hallelujah to God. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning and to feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. May God richly bless you as you are seated. I'm going to try to sing a song and we'll get into the word of the Lord going to Genesis the 26th chapter began reading in verse number 18 if you'd like to be getting that scripture together we're going to sing a song and get right on out of the way Sometimes fail and not be 
Mississippi. Thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. I want to preach to you what I feel in my spirit. Y'all have been having some great services with Brother Anthony and Daddy preaching and I I want to add to that. I don't want to slow nothing down, but I do feel in my spirit God gave me something, so I'd like to share it with you today. Genesis the 26th chapter began reading with verse number 18. Read one verse of scripture and you're hearing and then you can be seated. And verse number 18 said, And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. I'd like to take again that verse that he digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them. They had covered them up. They had filled them in. They had stopped them up. Isaac says, we got to dig again. we got to come back to the wells of revival. Dig it again. Praise God. I want to preach for just a little while. I'm redigging the wells of revival. Thank God. Redigging the wells of revival. Amen. Daddy, would you pray? Could we all raise our voices and our hands to the Lord and pray right now? Anoint these lips of clay this morning. God, anoint us to hear. Send revival to Mark today in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name. 
Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Thank you for coming. As I have mentioned, it's such a delight and an honor to be here with you. This morning I hold in my hand something very precious to me. I have another Bible, but this one here is just got in my presence just not too long ago. And um, I look in the pages and it says, Presented to my preacher, darling, your dad and mom, September the 22nd, 1975. And in mama's writing, it says, He's my darling. My preacher. And in daddy's handwriting, it says, If I can decipher this, Study he that being often reproved and hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. 1975. Memories go back a long way. Many, many of you this morning, there's no doubt in your, your mind that you could go back to many days in your childhood. I remember things in our childhood growing up that has stuck with me. And this morning I want to bring to you something that's deep within my spirit that I feel. You see, there was some wells of water that springs up into everlasting life as the Bible calls it. There was revivals that I experienced as a child. There's things that I want to go back to that I, I have been praying and I've been asking God. Lord, let your church go back to a place where we once was. When we saw the miracles happen and we saw people flock to the altars and begin to pray and seek the face of God for forgiveness of yeah. their sins. Right. And God began to deal with me on this subject, redigging the wells of revival. You see, there's times in their life when Abraham had dug these wells and they flowed freely. The water was clear, crystal clear, and it was cold. But there came a time in their life that uh, Philistines uh, had come in and they had dug them, or those wells that had been dug up, they filled them up. They had thrown debris in. Maybe they had taken the rocks that were up on top of the well and thrown it down in the bottom. Maybe they had taken tree limbs and whole trees and threw it down in the wells. And then maybe they had come along with the top of it and and they had filled it over with dirt. I don't know how long it was before Isaac came again to the place where the water used to flow. But when he saw that there was no wells there, he said, we got to dig again. We got to dig the wells out. And we got to get the water to flow it freely again. I want to tell you something this morning. We got to dig again the wells of revival. We got to let revival flow in this place. There's got to be a thing that's got to take place that's called revival. That's going to cause men and women to come to an altar of repentance and ask God to forgive them of their sins. It's going to be when a church is on their face praying and asking God, give me a revival. Come on, thank brother. God, thank God. Hallelujah. But you see, Isaac had been away for a long time. So now he comes back to a place uh, where he's got to remember. He's got to remember where the wells was because it wasn't set up like it was when he was young, when his dad had dug those wells. There wasn't landmarks as you talked about this morning. There wasn't landmarks that said there's a well out there. But Isaac had to remember in his mind. So this morning, that's what I began to do. I began to remember some things in my mind. God, hallelujah. I remember as a child going to revivals with my dad. I remember traveling across the country and I remember him being tired. I remember the old jalopy vehicles we used to drive. I remember all of the problems that everybody would have in normal society. But I can remember when he would get up to preach and the anointing of the Holy Ghost would fall upon that congregation and people would come to the altar and literally there was no room to get here because people were praying and asking God to forgive them of their sins. Well, yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. I remember. 
I remember as a child many nights in the middle of the night waking up and hearing my mother in the living room pray and she was asking God to protect her family and to use her husband and to use her children she would tell us later I'm sorry I didn't mean to wake you up but I can tell you right now I'm so thankful for a heritage of a parents that pray and seek the face of God I tell you all that to tell you this. It didn't come by them rolling out their Bible and throwing their Bible on the platform and saying, all right, it's revival time. No, let me tell you something. It came through hard times. It came through somebody praying and fasting and asking God, give me a revival. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We come to church. And we show up and we have a few songs uh, and we sing and we have some a sermon that goes forth. Uh, and if you come down to this altar and you pray and you get up and you feel a little better, that's wonderful. That's good. But if you leave here and you're not changed uh, under the power of the Holy Ghost, then something's wrong in your spirit. There's got to be a hunger. There's got to be a thirst that says, I want more of God. I've got to have revival. I've got to have revival. Glory. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We read about Hannah in the Bible. How she wanted a child. The Bible talked about she was praying so earnestly that they thought she was drunk. There was something that burned down deep inside of her that said, Give me a child. Give me a child. Give me a child. Give me a child. If you don't come to this altar, if you don't come to this church with a burning desire down inside of you that says there's got to be a child born of the water and of the Spirit. There's got to be those that come and ask God for forgiveness. I can't sleep. I can't stand it. I've got to pray. Come on, that's good preaching. Hallelujah. That's digging the well of revival again. When you're not satisfied with me and my four and no more. When you're praying and saying, God, fill Marks with the Holy Ghost. Let there be a revival that springs out in Marks, Mississippi. In our school system. In our workplaces. we got to have revival. Come on, that's good preaching. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. You see, it's okay to pray for our family. And I do it all the time. I pray for my family. I pray that God would watch out for them, protect them, put a hedge around the battle. I pray for my lost loved ones, and I say, God, whatever it takes, save their soul. That's fine. That's well and good. But what about your neighbor? What about those that you meet every day at the grocery store? What about the lady at the checkout counter that's going through troubles and trials? What about the woman down at the grocery store? What about at the bank where you do business? Wherever you meet people, every day they're going to hell. They're lost. Do we not have a burden? Come on. To pray. And when that burden gets a hold of us and we start saying, God, I can't sleep. i got to get up and pray. I want to see someone filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost that begins to get something that eats at you. That says, I gotta pray. I gotta pray. I gotta pray. All right. I know we all got our own burdens. We are. We got our own trials that we go through. Everybody's facing every situation. Daddy didn't mention it this morning, but I've, I've battled sickness for the last couple of months. I've been under an attack, and I know I know good and well what it is. I can, I can tell when the enemy of our soul comes against us. There was a time that I was battling kidney infection. Then that came along with kidney stones. I was fighting kidney stones, trying to work, answering the phones. And in the middle of a kidney stone attack, I was sweating bullets. My wife was, she was praying. I was walking the floor. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't get comfortable nowhere. If you've ever had kidney stones, you know what it is. And I'm, I'm right in the middle of it. My phone's ringing because I'm a supervisor on my job. And I, I'm at the house and I'm praying, oh God. And I answer the phone and I'm gritting back the tears. And I'm, I'm doing everything I can. I can't sit still. I can't lay down. I can't sit on the couch. i got to walk the floors. I'm bent over. I'm praying, God, you got to do something. I don't know if I can stand this anymore. God, you got to do something. I'm drinking water left and right. I'm guzzling it down. And, I, and finally, there comes a relief. Uh, and you're thanking God for it. But I'm under the attack of kidney infection. Kidney stones. i got a cellulitis attack. Hit me in my legs. Uh, and they 
wanted to put me in the hospital. Then there was something else that I broke out in hives all over my body. And I went to the hospital. Well, I went to the, well, I did go to the emergency room. And they wanted to put me in. And I said, please don't. And they sent me home with some medicine. I'm telling you something. When you get under an attack, the devil don't want you to preach. The devil don't want you to sing. The devil don't want you to play. The devil don't want you to worship God. But when you stand right on the word of God. And you said, I don't care if the devil tries to kill me. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to give him my best. I'm going to give him my all. If you get that determination, there's revival. You're digging up the wells of revival. Don't matter what you're going through this morning. We've got to learn to worship him through our adversary. we got to learn to worship him while we're going through the middle of our trial. We are digging up a well of revival. Glory. Hallelujah. There's nothing no greater to witness than somebody being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If it ever gets to the place that you get kind of used to seeing somebody filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there's something wrong with your spirit. We was at our church having a great time. And the Holy Ghost began to move. People at the altar. And I looked around and I said, oh God, please help me. Don't ever let me get complacent when it comes to the fact that somebody is at this altar and they're needing you. I've seen people out there playing with their fingernails. and I've seen people talking back and forth, unconcerned. And there's yeah. folks at the altar praying. And then when I saw them begin to speak in other tongues, there was something that came over me. It was a joy. Do you know what that's called? That's called revival. That's called digging the well of revival. Because when it begins to flow, you're not just satisfied that your brother, your son, your daughter, your mom, your dad, but it's somebody else that's being filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a joy. There's a joy that begins to flow up. The Bible talks about the well of living water that springs up in the everlasting life. we got to get that joy going in our life. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. It's one thing to shout and dance when the music's going just right. Brother Randy can play some beautiful music. He can tear that keyboard up. Yes, he can. And when he begins to play, he can get a music that the beat is just right. And we can all stand on our feet and we, and we begin to clap and we begin to feel something moving. And it's all right to shout and dance. I promise you I like to worship God. But it's easy to worship when the music's just right. But can we worship when God begins to flow in our spirit and says there's somebody here today that needs to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God says, hey, there's somebody here that's going through a trial. Can you give me some worship where they can feel the presence of God, where they can feel the conviction and want to come to the altar? Can you get a burden? Can you get a burden to pray for somebody today? Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. That's called digging up the wells. Of Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says it like this, and I believe in the book of Psalm, David was saying, As the deer panted after the water broke, so does my soul pant after the old Lord. Yeah, that's it. Come on. I've owned horses in my lifetime. And I've watched as we've ridden them horses till they have foam covered them. And we lead them to water and we have to pull them back to tell them, oh, you can't drink that much. It can hurt you. But I've watched that hunger as they begin to lap up that water. If you've ever had a dog and you've seen him running around and it be so hot that he begins to lap up that water. David was saying, as the deer panteth after thee, O Lord, or after the water broke, so doth my soul panteth after thee, O Lord. It's because something you want so desperately, that cool, refreshing water, that your spirit is saying, I want you, Lord. I need you, Lord. i got to have you, Lord. I don't care what's going on, God. i got to have you more in my life than I've ever had before. Yeah. Just like the cool, refreshing water. I gotta have the Spirit of God. It's gotta move in me. It's gotta flow through me. I gotta have you more than I've ever had before in my life. Oh, God, help us today. We're redigging the wells of revival. We gotta remember where the wells was. And we gotta go and dig up uh, those wells and get the water to flow in freely. Come on, that's good preaching. Remembering. Remembering, I'm remembering. I'm remembering a time, Dad, when I was just a young man, just a young boy. And I used to travel with him, as I said many times, but this one particular time in our church in Millington, they asked me to sing in the choir so I didn't go out of town to Mountain View with Daddy. 
like I used to. We stayed and we had choir practice. And I was so nervous. I, did, I didn't want to sing, but they talked me into it. And Daddy told me some, gave me some advice when he came back. <clears throat> that night he walked in church because they had an afternoon service in Mountain View. And he got to our church that night when it was in the middle of it. But I, I was so nervous that they had stuck a microphone stand in front of me. And I had both of my hands down deep in my pockets. And I had my eyes shut. And I'd peek out of one eye just to see what the choir director would say, the chorus or verse. I began to sing and I was so nervous. But I can tell you right here today in the fear of God. Although I was nervous, I can tell you when I felt that warmth of the Holy Ghost as it began to flow all over me. And when I came to myself and I opened my eyes, the choir had all went out into the audience. Everybody was dancing and worshiping because the Holy Ghost began to flow. It was not something that was me, but it was the Holy Ghost, the anointing. I'm remembering this morning. I want to go back to those days when God begins to flow and the prior practice we had anointing flowing in the practice uh, when people were dancing and shouting in practice i gotta go back to the place where we can have revival and it starts in our home come on that's good some people they don't pray until they get to church the other night i come home from work i get up at 3 30 in the morning and here lately i didn't tell you this but the, We've been in a new job and I've been working till 6 and 7 o'clock in the evening. And I have long, long days and I come home so stressed out. And Daddy's been asking me to come preach and I said, can, can we put it off just a little bit? And so I come home the other day and there was a conference going on at Brother Dillon's church, the Apostolic Conference. And it was being broadcast live streaming on the internet. So I told my wife, I said, I want to watch it. I went in and got my bath and everything and I come back. And Brother David Smith was preaching. And as, as he began to preach, and God's Spirit was beginning to move all over that place. Although we were not there, we was in my living room. The Holy Ghost came in my living room. And I said to myself, this is just me, Brother Randy. I said, you know, the big manly part of you says, don't cry right here. Your wife's going to think you're a big baby. I'm sitting on the couch, and the Holy Ghost was moving. I shut my eyes my eyes and the tears began to flow and I said I don't know if I can stand it any longer and I looked up and my wife had her hand raised in the air and tears were flowing down her face and I said thank you Jesus and I began to cry and I began to speak in tongues you know what there's got to be some things happen in our home we can't wait till Sunday morning to come to the house of God where we began to pray but we gotta have an anointing that's gonna flow in our home we gotta dig up the well of revival I remember I remember the anointing that flowed as the preaching of the word of God went forth I remember those days I remember we preached a 14 week revival in Mountain View, Arkansas in the middle of the winter time it was snow and ice, but then people would come down from the hills and they would come to church and they had one thing on their mind and that was to worship God and to give Him some praise. But you know it was during those times that people were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Burdens were lifted. People were or set free from chains that grinded them up. I want to tell you something today. If we're going to have a revival that God's wanting to give this city to this church right here, you're going to have to dig up some things in the past. You you're going to have to go find that old well of revival that you used to go to and you used to dip freely and drink freely from. you got to dig it up and get the debris out. And you got to let God move in your life. You see, today there's so many things that's clogged our wells up. Now, unless some of you are just letting this go over your head, let me, let me break it down for you just a little bit. Brother Daniel, I worship the church. I pay my tithes and my offerings. I'm faithful to the house of God. I thank God for that. I know your pastor thanks God for that. But what about the scripture in the Bible that says, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run this race with patience. You see, there's some things that's not sin, but they're weights that we're carrying around on us. 
never seen it before one day till someone put a skit on in our church and they were talking about the weights and they began to pile things on. They put the, the altar bench and lifted it up and put it on their back and they began to bend over because of the weight that was on them and to try to drag it around. Some of us are going around with so many weights on us that we can't worship God. We can't lift our hands freely and worship God because of the weights that we're carrying around. we got to get those weights off of us and re get the well of revival so that we can come to church and throw our hands up and worship and we can get out of the aisles and dance freely and worship freely so God can use us. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Hallelujah. Remembering where the wells are at. Now unless you misunderstand me this morning. I thought hard about this, Dad. I said, I don't know if I can tell us or not. But there's so many people out there today that are redigging wells that are not the same wells that we had so long in our life. I'm not talking about digging a new well of uh, revelation, a new well of salvation. There ain't but one way to God. <laughs> one way to God. There's a charismatic world that is saying that there's many spokes in the rim that comes to God. No, 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 no. We're not talking about a rim on a bicycle that's got many spokes. We're talking about one Lord, one, one faith, faith, and one, one baptism. There's only one way to get to God. And my Bible tells me you've got to repent of your sin. You've got to be born again of the water and of the Spirit. You've got to speak in tongues as the Holy Ghost came and the evidence of that Holy Ghost comes. You've got to be baptized in the only saving name. That's Jesus' name. And if you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, you need to go down in the water baptism in that name carried upon you in Jesus' name. I'm not talking about digging another well of salvation. I'm talking about digging up the well that's already been there. But you let the devil clog it up and fill it up with things of this world. Come on, brother. Come on, that's good preaching. You see, we talked about laying aside every weight in the sin. You may not have sin in your life. You just might have weights filling up your, your well. Maybe your well's flowing a little bit, but it's just got some dirt and some trash in it. And today I come in the fear of God to tell you we need to get that junk out of your well and let it flow free and pure again in your life. The gifts of the Spirit needs to operate in the church. The healing needs to flow in the church service. Hallelujah to God. God uses your pastor in the gifts of the healing and, and, and ministering to people. You need to let it flow in your life. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 We get started talking about the gifts of the Spirit and people start clamming up. Amen. But when the early church was born, it was on fire. Yes. yes it was. The Bible says that there was 120 in the upper room and they all were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that same day they were added unto the church 3,000 souls. Hey man, when someone tries to tell you this is only for the 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 the, the apostles, uh, tell them, nah, -uh, no sir, <laughs> they was more than just the apostles. Got it? Praise the Lord. They said, well, okay, maybe it was just 120. No, there was more than 120. The Bible said there were 3,120 that day that got it. Well, maybe it was just for the 3,120. Oh, no, sir, I know they were 3,121 because one day, September the 4th, 1972, I was five years old. God filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I've been drinking from that well ever since. And that well is flowing, and it's pure. And I'm feeling the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody needs to stand at your feet and tell the devil, I'm getting my well cleaned out today. Could we stand right now? Brother Randy began to pray. So play something real cool, soft. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the Lord promised us that the latter house would be greater than the former. Hallelujah. 
the thought that the condition of the church today is greater than it was in the Bible is not true. There's got to be miracles and healings and dead rays, blinded eyes open. The kind of hunger and desperation and brokenness, it'll pull God from where He is to the needs of the church. You got to have a hunger. You got to have a hunger for the Word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, when they were held captive in Babylon. The older men that were there began to weep when they saw the rebuilt temple. Not because of sadness, but a cry of a maiden. They remembered the glory of the first. They remembered the glory. The cry of the weepers and the noise of the rejoicers were heard. And they were the young men. They didn't remember, but they were rejoicing because the temple had been rebuilt. The older ones were weeping because they were so glad to see it rebuilt again. When we come into the house of God, those old time saints of God may remember the, the brush harbor. You may remember the glory days. And when God begins to pour His Spirit out, you may begin to weep with the joy that's a weeping. But let me tell you something, you young people, you need to rejoice because God is doing something great in our midst. There needs to be an anthem of praise that goes up because God is in our midst. Come on, brother. I'm through. Redigging the well of revival. I'm going to open this altar up right now. I'll tell you what I feel in my spirit. I wish we were dancing and running the aisles. I love that. I do. But you see, if we come down to this altar... And we get a hunger and a thirst that says, oh God, i got to have revival in my city. Yeah, yeah. i got to have my husband, my children, my grandchildren. i got to have my loved ones filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to ask you, would you like to come and pray? Yeah. Right now, I feel the moving of the Spirit in this house right now. Yeah. God is saying, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. To be like Pour out your spirit to him right now. Pour out your heart. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. 